guys, it's Vanessa and welcome back to my channel. This week I'm sharing another what's for dinner with you guys. I like to share with you all the things I feed my family from Sunday to Thursday. This week was a little less elaborate. We have a couple sides and I have a couple main meals to share with you. So I'm not gonna waste any more time. We're gonna get right into it. But first, if you guys are new to my channel, please take a second and subscribe, click the notification bell and give it a big thumbs up if you liked this video. All right, let's jump right into Sunday. All right, guys, I just want to show you guys really quickly. We did end up getting takeout today um, a little earlier in the afternoon, so we've kind of been picking at leftovers of that. But I did originally plan on making like hors d'oeuvres and appetizers tonight. Since I'm not going to do everything, but I still want us to have something around 6.30 or so to snack on. It's 4 o'clock right now. I'm going to go ahead and try and make some uh, garlic fingers out of this pizza crust mix that I bought at Walmart. I thought it looked really neat. It said it had sourdough starter in it and everything. So I'm going to give it a try, but check out the measurements. It says two spoons extra virgin olive oil. I don't know if that means teaspoons, tablespoons, and what the heck is 10 grams of salt? So I'm guessing that this is like European or something and I'm gonna have to look up the measurements, but I'll list them below. But yeah, I'm gonna give this a shot. All you do need though is water, salt, and oil in a bowl, and then it takes a couple hours to sit and rise. So I thought it was different than my typical craft pizza kit and I figured it was worth trying. So let's go ahead and put all the ingredients in the bowl and get it ready to rise. All right, so I just wanna fill you guys in. 10 grams of salt is about the equivalent of half a tablespoon. So now we know, now we can put all the ingredients together. Let's do that now. Just covering it in plastic wrap now that it's in the bowl with the oil. And now we're gonna let it sit for 20 minutes and then it should rise. We're gonna roll it out onto whatever shape or pan we're gonna be using. And then it sits in the oven for 90 minutes. And then it should rise, I guess, and you can bake it and do whatever you want. We're making garlic fingers, like I said. I'm just wondering if it's worth it, but this is all part of the process, right? Okay. So I don't think it's risen very much. I have my uh, stoneware that I've greased. It looks a lot greasier on camera than it actually is. <laughs> so what I am gonna do, cause it says to just lay it out, but it was really sticky. So I'm just gonna put some olive oil on my hands here. And we're just gonna see what this looks like. Easy. warm it's weird all right but it feels nice it's not sticky now because there's that oil Ooh, it got really like pulley though all right here we go being fancy pizza people I'm just gonna give it a few more kneads and pulls kind of folding it into itself on the bottom it's getting oily again <laughs> sticky again because I'm working it with my hands all right so we're just gonna push this out until it's the desired thickness any more oil That's to roll it out. I mean, the only way you'd be able to roll it out is with a rolling pin and a ton of flour. And I didn't really wanna add any flour to it. So we're just gonna keep doing this. So we can speed this up. Finally, I got you, baby, here in my heart. When I'm with you, I feel so much better, oh yeah. Before you, I was just a shell, so stuck in the dark. Just like this, with a tea towel. And set it right in the oven. I'm just gonna show you what I did. So I did put the towel, and because I was a little worried that it would rise and it would stick to the towel, I tucked it really tight under my grate, so it's pulled across pretty tightly up there. And it needs to sit in there for 90 minutes, and then we're gonna bake it for about 15 minutes at 425. Add the toppings we want, bake it for another eight, and we're good to go. Okay, so let's pull this back and see what it looks like. I mean, it looks the same, really. Do you think this is gonna work? 
Uh, I feel like it's almost too thick. Wow, it's actually really, I could push it down a little bit now actually. Let's just stretch it a little bit more. Four twenty-five. Bye bye. All right, so while those are cooking, here's everything that I'm gonna use. So basically I'm just using this garlic spread that I buy. This is pretty much honestly as far back as I can remember my mom buying this kind of stuff when we're making our garlic bread. So it should be good for garlic fingers, I think. We'll just do it kind of liberally, but not too liberal. Know what I mean? You'll see. And I will sprinkle some Parmesan on there as well. We have just straight up shredded mozzarella cheese to put all over. Hopefully that's enough. This was stuff I shredded myself. MJ, <laughs> ignore her. So hopefully that's enough because it's all we got. And then, so here on the East Coast in Canada, if you're having garlic fingers, you are dipping them in donair sauce or pizza sauce. That's an alternative if you don't like this, as my mother would say, she likes pizza sauce. But this is donair sauce. It's amazing. We'll take a look at what the ingredients say. Water, sugar, modified milk ingredients, vinegar. Anyway, basically it's like vinegar and milk and sugar and all the goodness and it's amazing. I don't know about this brand. I don't think I've ever had it, but whenever we order from a restaurant, we always have donair sauce. So this is what I'm gonna use to build it and this is what I'll serve it with. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and slather this on as quick as I can because it is gonna start to melt almost right away, right? So, wow, that's kind of neat how it's melting into it. So just spread it all over right up to like nearly the edge. Like I said, it's not a pizza. Scoop it on and spread it out quickly. Let's go quickly. going in with the cheese. Now if you had bacon or bacon bits or like the crumbled real bacon, that would be good. We don't. Because <laughs> you can make, you know, the cheese, bacon, garlic fingers. Those are always really good. We like those here. go guys that ow 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 is our snacky supper dinner we already ate takeout you know the drill I'll show you what it looks like when we plate it up <laughs> so here it is you guys cheesy garlic pizza fingers, whatever you want to call them. Here we call them garlic fingers. I think you got them, they're like that everywhere. Our favorite's Pizza Delight or Greco, but there you go guys, unbelievable. Mm, nom, 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 nom. Okay, calm down. <laughs> All right, hey guys, welcome to Monday. Today we are having baked rice casserole and chicken drumsticks on the barbecue. So I'm gonna flip you guys around and show you everything that's going into this meal. All right, so if you guys haven't noticed by at this point, my meals are usually pretty basic for the most part, unless I'm looking up a Pinterest recipe, then we go all out. But for me growing up, this was a staple, rice casserole. So all you need is some rice. So I just use this converted rice here. I don't know what the big difference is in all of these types of rice, I really don't. But this is what my mom always used, this is what I use. You're gonna need some water to go into that. You're gonna need soy sauce, you need some oil, you're gonna need a can of sliced mushrooms. Yes, use the can, it's worth it. I'm sorry if it's loud, my dishwasher is running. You're gonna need the whole thing with the juice. You're also gonna need an entire pack of onion soup mix. You're gonna need some celery. And yeah, that's what goes into the rice. As far as supper or the meat or the protein, we're just having some drumsticks. I just took these out. They should be thawed out by supper time. We're gonna go on the barbecue. We're gonna slap some of this Memphis sweet and spicy barbecue sauce to try out. Sean at the 
Dickinson Homestead. I believe it was one of her videos I saw this in and she raved about it. So when I saw it, you know, I had to have it. Anytime I see anything here in Canada that I think is primarily American, I get super psyched and I buy it. So I'm a sucker. What can I tell you? I'll let you know tonight if it's any good. And then of course this one, Montana's Chipotle Honey Barbecue Sauce is my ultimate favorite. So we'll probably do half of that one and half of this one or see what the kids want, but it's just the four of us tonight. And that's it guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and slap the rice together and show you how quickly that goes together. Now, as per usual, you guys, I will list any recipes below, but I do wanna show you, this is an old cookbook I've had since 2004. It's got some oldies, but some goodies in here. I'm talking, there's food stains, like I don't even know what's happening anymore. So basically, uh, I have my rice casserole in here. Like I said, my mom's been making it since I was a kid. My aunt used to make it all the time. Here's the recipe if you wanna screenshot it if you don't wanna wait for me to type it out below or you don't want below, but this is it guys. You throw everything into the container and you throw it in the oven at 350, stir it at 30 minutes, then again at 45. Add more soy sauce if you would rather a darker consistency in your rice. That's a personal choice, but you'll see all that in a minute. I just wanted to show you this. This is the OG of cookbooks for me. <laughs> if I lost this, I'm pretty sure I'd cry. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add all the ingredients to this pot and I'm sorry, I am literally Right below us is my dishwasher. I live in a small 1200 square foot house with six people. This is what we got. So I'm gonna go ahead and add everything. The ingredients are listed here and here we go. just gonna put a lid on it. If you don't have a dish with a lid, just use a lim aluminum foil. We're gonna throw it in the oven at 350. Like I said, it takes upward of 60 minutes, one hour. And you'll see, I ended up adding three quarters of a cup of soy sauce, not just half a cup like the recipe calls for here because I know after making it for so long that I always end up adding at least another quarter cup. And you'll see when I check it, I'm probably gonna add a little bit more because I prefer a little darker and a little saltier, but you could absolutely use less and you could use low sodium. It's a personal preference in this rice. I find a lot of the flavor is the soy sauce and the salt. So when I use low sodium, it's not quite the way I wanted to taste, but again, you experiment and try it out and let me know. <laughs> All right, let's pop this in the oven. what it's looking like right now. So all I like to do, and it's probably pretty close to done, but I'm gonna give it another stir to make sure everything on the bottom kind of gets incorporated because sometimes it's a little bit darker on the bottom. But I think this is a good darkness for me. So I would probably say your best to do three quarters of a cup of soy sauce, honestly, because you can see this right now. Like it's not super dark rice, right? It's actually a little bit darker in person. I don't find the camera does it very much justice. I'm actually not gonna put this back in. I think we're done. It's been about 55 minutes, so. I think if I do any more, it's gonna dry out, but if I leave it sit with the lid on it for a little bit, it should be good to go. So there's our rice ready for supper. So that was 55 minutes, three quarter cup soy sauce. Hopefully I didn't mix you up. <laughs> All right, so I wanted to show you guys these cooking, but real life moment. Um, if you guys have just started following me or just watched this video, I have Crohn's and some other issues. Anyway, ate something, didn't react well. I couldn't even get up to film the barbecuing. So starting to feel better. So I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. The rice is awesome because I had a little bite, which is part of what I think upset my stomach. Fabulous. So I'm gonna flip you guys around and show you the chicken. A little plate, the guys already ate theirs. My oldest stepson has a friend over, so they're eating, but see, this is why you need the canned mushrooms. It's so good, and the celery and the rice, so, so good. And this is the Memphis sweet barbecue sauce. Jamie said it's amazing. I haven't tried it, because 
I'm a little scared to eat right now. <laughs> but that's all that's left. We've got two drumsticks left. There's Belle's plate. She's at the neighbors playing with their little girl right now. We have plenty of rice. We usually eat this for a few days after the fact. And that's it, guys. No veg, because it's just basic. I don't know what to tell you. This is family cooking on a Monday night at our house. <laughs> All right, guys, it is Tuesday. I am feeling much better than I was yesterday. Ignore the disaster of my hair. We spent uh, the afternoon at the beach. It is beautiful out here. So supper tonight, we are having uh, beef patty sliders and some turkey burgers. So I'm making mini uh, hamburgers and I'm making big size turkey burgers for the adults. So let's flip you around and show you everything you're gonna need. All right, so I would say every time I make turkey burgers, I do them a little bit differently, and I can't remember how I make them, which I used to make them so, so, so good. So I'm gonna wing it tonight, and I'm sure it'll be fine. You put enough seasonings in it, that's the thing about turkey, it will really take up all those flavors. So I have a pack of lean ground turkey. I'm also gonna add to it some spinach. If you had frozen, that would work. Just uh, thaw it and then drain it, squeeze it really tightly in some paper towel or your hands over the sink and get the liquid out before you add it to your turkey. I'm also gonna add a handful of oats. This has just always been a way that I was able to add some nutrition to my burgers. So I add the spinach, I add some oats. It stretches your meat as well. Just like if you were to add crackers or crumbs, things like that. And I'm also gonna add some hemp hearts just because why not? Let's try and be healthy, right? I'm gonna serve them up on these thins. I just find these are the best buns to use when you're using these because once you build them up with the spinach and stuff, they can become pretty substantial. So to season them, I'm gonna use a pack of onion soup mix. Now remember I had bought this um, garlic and the reason I like the squeeze tube is for things like this when I don't wanna two chunks of garlic, but I don't wanna use garlic powder because I find that can be really salty or high in sodium. So that's what we're gonna use. We're also gonna use a little bit of Worcestershire sauce and pepper and some salt. Now for the other burgers I'm making, we're just using regular old ground beef, medium ground beef here. I like to use medium because I think a little bit of fat just makes it better. I just realized my nails are kind of dirty. That again, we literally just got home from the beach, sorry. And then we're gonna have them on these little tiny sesame buns. So. These I will be doing up on my, on my griddle. I'm just gonna fry these up on the griddle. I don't think that they would work out very well outside on the barbecue. I'm just afraid they'll fall through and we don't have like a black stone or anything. And then these are going on the barbecue, which Jamie's gonna make. So we're gonna do up all these burgers. And I don't think we're gonna do a side. I think I'm just gonna cut up, I have like a tomato over here. I'm gonna cut up a tomato and some cucumbers and maybe put out like a little bit of a tray of vegetables to go on the side with this. So, okay, let's go ahead and get started. First step, let's make our sliders and then we'll jump right into the turkey. T E M V T E D T E M T E D I was tempted. Here's the burgers. They look pretty good. They smell very garlicky. I think they're gonna be good. And I am gonna put um, barbecue sauce on them, probably the Chipotle honey barbecue sauce from Montana's. So it's probably gonna be a big array of flavors because you've got turkey, garlic, and barbecue sauce. But you know what? It's gonna be delicious. You wait. All right, so next up, we're gonna go ahead and form up our sliders. It's a little bit frozen in the middle, so if you see me working it a little bit. All right, so I don't do anything to the ground beef. I'm just gonna go ahead and make little tiny patties, basically, so they fit on those little sliders. And we're just gonna do that now. And I am gonna roll them in a ball, and I'm gonna kind of do them like a smash burger when they get onto my little griddle, kind of for fun. What was never done.
farewell and goodbye. All right, there they are, all ready to go. Now, once they're on the grill, I will flatten them and salt and pepper them when they're on the grill, or my griddle. <laughs> Alright guys, I am going to put together a small little salad here. So what I'm going to do first is this lettuce is, yeah, but I think I can salvage some. So I'm basically just going to put this tomato, cucumber, and some red onion and people can eat it as is or make it a Greek salad. I have some feta that they can add and I have feta dressing. I even have Greek if anybody's adventurous. So there, the inside of the lettuce is fine. We're going to take out what we can and discard the rest. Ready to eat. Okay, so I have my griddle warming up. If you're curious, this is the Star Frit or the Heritage, it's the rock griddle. I also have the frying pans, they're pretty awesome. Now you don't need to put oil. Obviously, you don't need the oil because it's a non-stick griddle. I always put oil on things like when I'm making um, pancakes or smash burgers because you need that little bit of fat need that little bit of oil to give you those crispy edges. So all I do is kind of smooth it out. And otherwise it works like any other griddle. There's always hot spots, not hot spots. So let's start cooking. Let's put these on the grill. I thought that we had something special. I thought I handled this so well. I know we had the right intentions. But somehow it came to an end. Right, guys Jamie just came in with the turkey burgers he's too funny turkey burgers turkey burgers he's too funny he took a bite it fell apart a little bit I just want to show you guys the inside it's so so good he took up he's like I don't know because he was hesitant because it's a turkey burger and he took a bite he's like oh my god these are amazing so he's gonna have his just like that but I've also put out some lettuce and onions and cheese for the kiddos for their sliders so lettuce and onions for me. I just like lettuce and onions and mustard on my turkey burger. So I started putting it together. I'm gonna to show you guys what my plate looks like when it's all finished. All right guys, sorry, put my hair up. This is cooking mama. She got her hair up, she's ready to go. She got her Harley shirt on, she's got her mic. She's ready to go. <laughs> Such an idiot. All right guys, here is mine. Ooh, ah, I've got some Greek salad, my delicious turkey burger like you don't even know. And I'm gonna go and inhale this. I may even put some relish on it. And I'm gonna show you guys what the mini sliders look like too. Oh, I'm so excited to eat. <laughs> this is supper, you guys, for Tuesday night. And I just hit my mic. I'm so All right, so here we are on the final one of the week, the pasta salad. Like I said, you're gonna see, basically, this is what I look like in my intro. Uh, basically, we have done a lot of like barbecuing and stuff this week and things that maybe I didn't really film necessarily. We did some takeout. Anyway, tonight we are invited to go to a friend's house for a barbecue. It's just gonna be me and Jamie and my daughter and them. So I'm not making a huge salad. Every time I make it, I go way overboard. We end up throwing it out. So. I'm gonna flip you around and show you what's gonna go into this. It's super basic, you guys. I'm telling you, this is gonna take like three minutes. It's gonna shorten my video. Here we go. All right, ignore the little sesame seeds. I just made burgers for lunch. <laughs> uh, maybe I should have did a what I eat in the day. Anyway, so all I'm using for the pasta for this salad is I had a box of Velveeta and shells. We don't really eat that. I bought it to try. We've never gotten around to doing it. So all I did is I tucked aside the sauce that came in that box and I'm gonna use that like to pour over some broccoli or something one night. And then this is the perfect amount of pasta for the salad that I wanna make. It's just supposed to be a scoop, right? Like you're not supposed to eat a ton. So anyway, I love using the shells for this cause it kind of hangs on to some of the dressing. All it is for dressing guys is ranch 
and French equal parts. So I just, when I'm making an entire box of pasta salad, it takes two cups of dressing, one cup of ranch, one cup of French, and it's usually just the right amount. You're also gonna wanna add sugar in this. It's up to you how sweet you want it, so you'll have to gauge as you're kind of going. And remember, anytime a pasta salad sets, the flavors really develop. So I, with the two cups when I make a large one, I usually put a good five or six big pinches of sugar. With this today, where I'm only making a little bit, it's probably gonna be more like two or three pinches, and I will taste it as we go. As for vegetables, I have my celery here. I just keep it in a glass bottle. I just find it the best. And I'm gonna chop that up, dice it up finely. And you could, I'm not going to because again, I'm very aware of people who don't like onions. So we're not gonna put that in today, but it does taste very, very, very good in it. If you dice it up really finely and mix it up with your other vegetables, you could put cucumbers, peppers in this would be really nice. We really like the celery. So that's what we're gonna do. The first step is to cook your pasta. Let's do that now. So the next step, once the pasta is done cooking, I will strain it and then I will go ahead and just kind of soak it in some cold water to slow down the cooking process and help cool it off quicker so that we can add the sauce. But while it's cooling, let's go ahead and prep our sauce. All right, so the most complicated part, the dressing, <laughs> which really isn't, I'm just being an idiot. I don't even think we're gonna need that much because it's a little less pasta than I thought it was gonna produce, but you know what? Whatever, we're making do here. You know, when you're a YouTuber and you do what's for dinners, you think you'd be better prepared and you'd have this stuff open, but we're not, so here we go. So just a little more too. That should be good, I think. I'm gonna combine those. Then, this is the part. So when I say I'm adding a pinch of sugar, I'm doing like this, so. A good one, another one. I'm just gonna get the sides here. So I don't usually taste it till I mix it. I'll add this to the pasta, stir it up, and taste a piece of pasta. If it needs sugar, I'll add sugar right to the salad and mix it all in, and that usually always works, so no stress there. And this is way too much dressing. We'll be good. <laughs> and I should mention too, I already chopped up the celery that I'm gonna put in it. Again, I didn't go crazy, it's not super fine. I like having little bites in there, so. Well, let's grab our pasta. So I'm gonna go ahead and combine it in the dish I'm actually gonna uh, transported in or stored in in the fridge. These are just glass lock containers that I got from Costco. I'm not gonna say go buy them because the lids drive me crazy. It's only, only two clothes or three clothes and I don't know, I don't know. It drives me nuts. So if you can find similar products to that, go for it. Otherwise, I would steer clear. There was a reason there was $24 for a ton of them, right? You get what you pay for. Okay, yeah, that's not very much, is it? I may have to make more after this, we'll see. I'm a terrible gauge of space. People tell me that all the time. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in. Just a little bit, because again, I, I'm having a hard time gauging here. Combine it. And it's really a personal preference, how wet you want your pasta salad or how much sauce you like. I feel like these Velveeta shells are very crumbly compared to like regular pasta that I buy, like they're breaking and stuff. And I didn't cook them that long, so. Go ahead and add our celery to this. There we go. I think it's gonna need more. There it is. Super, super basic salad, guys, I'm telling you right now, but it's the taste. Mm. 
Mm, there it is. <laughs> so, so good, you guys. It's very, very good. I know it looks, it's one of those, it just looks so like, okay, wow, you combine salad dressing and celery. Good job. Yes, good job. Good food doesn't have to be complicated. All right, that's it. That's the salad. I'm gonna try not to eat that for lunch so that I have it for supper. All right, guys, that is it for my what's for dinner this week. Like I said, I didn't have a lot of elaborate meals, but garlic fingers, pasta salad, barbecue, burgers, that's kind of normal life. So there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this week. Stay tuned for my what's for dinner. I post these every Friday at around five o'clock Atlantic Standard Time on the East Coast in Canada. So I don't know what time that is where you are. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Have an awesome week and I will see you all in my next video. Take care. <laughs>